Hello again. So I'm going to do another example of a parabola, but this one's going to open up uh, to the left or to the right as opposed to up or down. So it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, since I have a y squared, actually what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be solving for x. If I had an x squared, then I'd be solving for y. At least that's what we do when we do parabolas. So I want to get x by itself. But actually I don't want to get x completely by itself. I want to keep the 4 with the x, not because I have to, uh, but because it's going to make the problem a lot easier later on. And I can divide 4 out at the last step. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add y squared to both sides. I'm going to go ahead and skip that step where I do plus y squared. I'm going to hope that you see it. So 4x equals, when I add y squared to both sides, I get y squared plus 2y plus 13. Okay. Fortunately, there's no coefficient in front of the y squared, so I don't have to do that GCF factoring stuff beforehand like I did in the last example. Woo! I could just, you know, kind of solve it. So here we go. I'm going to, yeah, I'll just do that. 4x equals y squared plus 2y plus, I don't know um, what the number is that I'm going to be worried while I do, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use completing the square in order to figure it out. I want to turn this into a vertex form, and basically when I have to do that, all uh, the first thing I have to take into consideration, pardon me, is that you know, I have to turn uh, this into some quantity square. It's just a completing the square trick that you use when you want to get something in a vertex form. And I got plus 13. Now, completing the square involves adding some mystical number. So to keep the equation balanced, if you add the number on this side, you better subtract that same number to keep it balanced. Now what I got is uh, 4x equals this, this, etc. What I do is I take this term right here, and I divide by 2. I always divide by 2, and that comes out to be 1. I want you to put that answer in parentheses and put a square after it because it comes out and helps you. Whatever this answer is goes in the blank. 1 squared is 1, subtracted by 1. Okay, so far so good. 4x equals, I can factor y squared plus 2y plus 1. That comes out to be 1, excuse me, y plus 1 squared. And then I got plus 12 in the end. Uh, not so bad. I didn't actually uh, get in proper formula because now I have to get the x by itself. And it pays to do this last because it's so much easier in this particular type of problem. Divide by 4, divide by 4, divide by 4. x equals uh, y plus 1 quantity squared divided by 4 is the same thing as 1 fourth. I'm just going to pull out the 4 in front. y plus 1 squared. I mean, you don't have to, but this way it shows you what the a term is, which is very convenient. And that's plus 3. Uh, one thing to be careful about, this is my h term, and this is my k term. Now, when we were solving for y, it was reversed, but when we're solving for x, you know, that's how it goes. So keep that in mind when you're doing this problem. Uh, this problem is going to open up sideways uh, because I'm solving for x, and it's going to open up to the right because it's positive. If it were negative, it would open up to the left. So that I know. So let me go ahead and give you like some kind of basic graph. Uh, this is actually more for my benefit, too, because I just can't like you know figure it out right away uh, without, you know, you know, trying to do that. So, let's figure this out. Now my vertex, in this case, is my h term, which is 3, and the opposite of whatever is in the parentheses, which comes out to be negative 1. Very important that you realize that. I'm not even going to do my axis of symmetry yet, but there's a reason why. I, I want you to at least see what's going on. So my vertex is at 3, 1, and it opens up sideways to the right. Shoot that in a different color. Now that you have a graph, now it's, um, now it's uh, a little bit better to figure out. Now it's a little bit easier. If I wanted to figure out my axis of symmetry, I've got to figure out where it cuts the line in half, where it cuts the graph in half. Well, where it does is right here. And what that is, is at y equals negative 1. It's this term. See, when you uh, go from up and down to side and side, it reverses things. So you've got to make sure that you don't get confused with that. And, you know, if I didn't write this down, I might get confused too, which is why I write it down to make sure, you know. So if I'm doing it, maybe you should do it too. So my vertex and my axis of symmetry are there. Now my directrix, uh, now I want to do my focus first, actually. My focus is some point on the graph that's inside the parabola. And I've talked about this numerous times. You know, it's basically where sound gets amplified uh, at, at the best particular spot. I don't... Uh, really know what it is, 
But I do know that it's my k value, whatever my k value is, as one of the points. Um, but I don't know the h value, but it's the same exact formula. So if you want to think about it, it's h plus uh, 1 over 4a. Okay. Uh, uh, my h is 3 plus uh, 1 over 4a, that's 1 divided by a fourth, that's 1. Hey, I actually have a good spot this time. I can actually figure it out. So my um, focus is at uh, 4, comma, negative 1. Okay, that's actually going to be pretty easy to find this. So this is my focus right here. Now my directrix is um, the same distance, it's equal distance opposite from the focus to the uh, vertex of the parabola. So this was one spot away, so it better be one spot away this way. So it's right here, it's 2, negative 1. So uh, that, it's not a point though, it's a line. It's a straight line that looks like this. So in this case, uh, my directrix, pardon me, is at the line x equals 2. And then, of course, the last part is the lattice rectum. And the lattice rectum is a length. And uh, what I'm asked to do is find the length of this line that crosses through the focus and hits the two points. And the formula for that is the same as the other one. It's 1 over the absolute value of a. That's 1 over 1 fourth. So the lattice rectum comes out to be 4. It's 4 units across. Uh, if my graph is drawn better, perhaps you'd see that, but I'm not perfect at what I do. I wish I were, but I'm not. So that's parabolas, uh, both an example of where it either opens up or down, which we've done before, and then one where it opens to the side. Uh, careful on it. Uh, using the formulas that we did on the very first lesson, two lessons back, if you were keeping track, you should use that when you're especially using this one, because it's confusing when you're working with something that's boring. Uh, with that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.